Hello everybody to a different kind of video. Today we're going to be learning how to create structs in Game Maker Studio and why they are so powerful. So a lot of people I think underuse structs in Game Maker because maybe they don't understand how it works. But it is incredibly powerful and it is going to save you so much time and it's going to make your code and engine architecture feel and run so much better than it already is. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. I've got this very basic project set up here that combines a few uh, different structs that I've created for my own games in the past and I'm going to showcase them and you're going to see why they're so fantastic. So let's just go ahead and run this code file before we even take a look at the code because I want you to just see what I'm doing with these. So this is my captain's log. Uh, it was a dark stormy night you know, line break. Uh, <laughs> I know, not a very invigorating story. Rain hit the wooden planks on deck. And Jason could feel the waves. Let's actually have another line break here. Smashing into the hole. So it's very interesting, isn't it? This is a text box in GameMaker Studio, and you can see it's got all sorts of different capabilities. Like I can, uh, you know, delete. I can hold down keys, just like you could in an old text editor. There's the little, uh, like, you know, uh, blinking cursor thing that you see usually in like the command prompt when you're typing something. Um, you know, you can change like the font. You can have a max word limit, like a title of what something is. Like I can hover and click in and out of it to activate a text box uh, or not. And if I type in this one, you can see that uh, I can be like, hey, and then it'll do like a chat thing. And then if I keep typing like a, another chat, again, again, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you can see it keeps going up and up and up like you would see in a multiplayer chat system, which I am currently using in my game Earthward. But this is all what structs can help you do. This is uh, quite like a simple example of how you can easily create things like this, like complex mechanisms or widgets uh, using just a struct with like one line of code, and that's all you really have to do. So now that you can kind of see what uh, a struct might be able to do, like the capability it can have, let's just go ahead and take a look at how we can actually do that now. So first off is declaring a struct. A struct is basically just a function that will create a new instance of an object and the type of that object will be whatever the name of the function is. So if we wanted to create a new struct, say like we had like an item as a struct, like create a new instance of an item, we could just say function item, and then after, just say constructor, and that's it. It functions like any other kind of function. And then what we can do is we can have uh, variables. You can think of this now as like we've just created an object. So if we said something like uh, xx equals like 128 or something like that, uh, that might be like the x value of our item or maybe we have like a, an ID of our item You know and maybe we have like an enum where it's like item ID, you know, like dot wood like we have like an enum of item ID and then we have like wood apple Sword or something like that. We could just have this item uh, by default be an item ID of wood and maybe we have like a, a stack of you know one and then a max stack of 999 and then so on and so forth you can see how we can just keep on adding properties to this thing and now say we wanted to uh, actually give it parameters when we create it and I'll go over how to create an instance of a struct in just a moment but say we did want to do that well in here we can just say X or in this case for our item ID right or item ID uh, item stack and then maybe uh, item damage that one would make quite a bit of sense. And then here, instead of setting these to 999, whatever, we can just set these to like our item stack and our item ID, like that. And then if we want to create a new instance of this item, right, we could just say, um, maybe we could just say wood equals new item. And new is the keyword that will create and allocate the memory required for a new instance of this item struct or object. And so now we can actually see at our parameters down here, item ID, item stack, item damage. So let's just go ahead and we'll say item ID dot wood. We'll say mm, item stack 
Eh, we'll give it like a seven. Why not? And then item damage is item or three, right? Our wood will do three damage because why not? And then we can say like sword equals new item. Item ID does sword uh, one. And then for our damage, we can do 10 because it's a sword. And now we immediately run into a problem here. Our max stack is 999. Our sword probably shouldn't be able to stack like that. So how do we do that? How do we change that without adding another parameter? Well, just like an object, you can do sword and then use the dot as the accessor, max stack equals one. And that would directly change a property of that instance of that struck sword. But of course, you don't really always want to do that because that can get a little bit messy sometimes. Like you could just say like max stack here and then uh, equals 999. And then we can replace that and that will work perfectly fine. And if you're wondering what this is, right, I actually noticed a lot of people don't know what this is. This is a default value in a function. And that means when we call it, you can see now it has these little brackets around it uh, in the uh, kind of autocomplete here at the very bottom, where you can see like my mouse cursor it has the brackets around it, meaning we don't actually need to put anything in there because this is what it is by default. So if we don't supply it with anything, uh, like with, you know, if we just uh, left this blank instead of putting a value here like 999, it would default itself to 999 and we don't even have to type anything out there. So these are all very common things that you'll see when you're creating structs and you'll see how useful these really are once you get down to the more specific details of creating your own structs. Now just so I can test this, right, so I can kind of show you how this can all, you know, be applied, let's just go into this object which I have so gracefully called object1 and we're going to go ahead and define our enum and struct in here. Obviously, you probably want to do this in a script. It makes much more sense, right? Because those are compiled, um, you know, before the game is run. So you'll always have access to those. But for now, this will work fine just for testing stuff out, right? So we have our wood and then we have our sword item here. And let's say we wanted to give our items a name. Like that. And then we'll pass in another parameter called name. And then we'll say right here, wood and then sword. Now let's go here and we will draw text 6464 our sword dot name. Let's run it and see what happens. Okay. Dot mu not set before reading it. Oh whoops I spelled that mu instead of new. <laughs> a little mistake. So you can see it prints the name sword which is awesome. Now say we had like a hotbar system, hotbar item, we'll say is equal to sword, right? And we'll say hopper item dot name instead of sword dot name. And then we'll say if, uh, yeah, we'll just say if keyboard check VK space Pop our item equals wood. And that should now change us from our sword to our wood. So we'll see it says sword right here at the top. Press space. Now it says wood. So you can see now imagine you had like a thing where you could, you know, like if mouse wheel down, right? You could say hop bar item. Maybe you had like an array system of like you had slots or something like that. Uh, we can actually do that very easily. Well, you know what? Just for the, the fun of it, let's go ahead and do that. We'll say for var i equals 0, i is less than 5, i plus plus. And we'll say slot i equals new item, item ID. We'll create an item ID type of none. 1, 0, none. Like that. And we will say in our enums, we'll have our none be at the end like that and hotbar index equals zero and then we mouse wheel down hotbar index plus plus if hotbar index is greater than four hotbar index will be equal to zero and then we'll say hotbar item equals slot of hotbar index like so and so now we can populate this with items. So let's actually just, uh, let's do this. Let's just 
give ourselves three wood and then <laughs> just so we don't have to uh, make any new items. Now imagine you had like a, a texture and you just drew the texture of these things. Right, like how awesome would that be? All right, that'll work fine. Although I want to add semicolons for my own sanity. Okay. And then if we ran this, we could actually, uh, you know, go through all of our different slots. So you can see I'm, I'm scrolling down and you can see we're going through and we're just kind of like going through our hotbar item, which is very cool. And what we'll actually do is we'll create a few new different kinds of items. So we'll say our apple and then, you know, maybe our pickaxe and then some stone. We'll say pickaxe, stone, apple, and then we'll say, we'll change these as well. Stone, pickaxe, sword, and then if we run this, you can see we're cycling through from our pickaxe, sword, wood, apple, stone, just by scrolling our uh, mouse wheel up and down. Uh, you saw how easy that was. We basically just created like an inventory system in a, about four minutes. It's not very complicated and it is super powerful. Just imagine how crazy you could get with this struct. You could have like an enchant, you know, and you could just maybe set that equal to none until you give it one. You could give it like a, a durability, you know, of something of, I don't know, 50 and then a max durability. And then maybe you had like a, I don't know, like some kind of damage type, right? Maybe you had an enum for that. Maybe you had an enum damage type. You had melee, ranged, magic. Uh, it's super easy, or you probably want to set that to melee because that would make more sense. But you see how easy it is to make something very seemingly complex using just a uh, struct. You can easily um, condense all of your data into something like this. But let's take a look at a little bit more, uh, you know, complex example. So I have these little text fields right here, right? This is the struct for the text field that you're seeing, where you can type text and all of these things. Uh, I have a max characters, text, width, and height, and then the position on the screen, right? Um, and I'm going to show you something very, very cool that you can do. Let's go into our object again. We have our port field and our IP field. So I personally do this for... Um, my other games like where I want to input maybe an IP address like this you can see <laughs> they're overlapping because the positions are the same but um, you kind of get the idea let's actually do this real quick just so we can see this a little bit better so you can see we have all these different text fields and you can just click on them and you can't type in them unless they're activated uh, you can click out of them and things like that you can hold down delete you can like type Pretty much everything you want shift to do caps line breaks with shift enter it's really really just fantastic and you also might have noticed in our draw ui i have this thing text field render so text field render is a function that actually takes in uh, an instance of a struct and if we go over here you'll see okay let's minus that real quick text field render this is the the main function here. this is like the update function you can think of uh, for our text field that actually renders everything and handles all of the keyboard input right and you can see that's quite long it's quite lengthy and one of the cool things you can do with this is you can actually copy paste stuff in here so like let's say i had i took all of that this might break it i'm pretty sure i tried this and it didn't work perfectly yeah there you go <laughs> so you can see you can't actually copy paste um and if i try and do it in a box that's too small it won't work now one of my absolute favorite things to do is whenever you create like an instance of a struct, you add it to a list. Because an instance of a struct, self, the self keyword references this instance of the struct. So what you could actually do is you could have a, a list like this, ds list add global dot, I don't know, text field list or something like that. And you could have, uh, and then you could just say self, and you would add this object to a list. So say you wanted to automatically render every single thing you created because right here I'm just calling this for each individual one right what if you wanted to automatically render all of them well you could just add them to a list like I just did there and then loop through the list and then call their render on all of the self on all of the uh, elements in that list and it would automatically render everything without even having to call text field render 
which is incredible. And I do this a lot for my things when I have like buttons or containers or things like that. It's super, super helpful. But let's go into more of the cool things you can actually do with structs because there's a little bit more. Um, although I found this to be not as helpful, right? The static functions. It's like a static add or something like that. I don't remember what it is because I really do not use them very much. But let's actually take a look at the documentation. They probably have it somewhere in here. There it is. Static add right here equals function. Something like that. And this is the name of the function. So we can call this maybe like a click or something like that. And then if you had an instance of the struct, like say we had our port field, you could say something like this now. Let's go back into our object. You could say chat field dot click. And this would invoke that function of that uh, instance of that struct. But the reason why I think that's kind of useless is because first off, there's no autocomplete <laughs> for that yet. They don't have autocomplete for structs, um, which is very unfortunate. Like when you're doing like an accessor for a struct, they really need to add that. Uh, very, very imperative that they do that very soon. But you can just do this. Why not just be like function, like text field click or something like that. Um, and then just be like, have it take in a text field. And then just be like, oh, cool, with text field. Because you can do that. Remember, it's an instance of an object. So you can use with and things like that. And then you can just say, I don't know, click action, <laughs> do something. Don't know what that would even do. But that's what you'd want to do. And then you can just call text field click and then test field. And that would execute that script uh, on that object. And that just makes more sense to me. I think that's a little bit more clean um, in GameMaker's interface. If you're using something like C++, definitely use static functions or you know functions within the classes that makes way more sense but this isn't c++ this is game maker studio and so things are different so hopefully now you can kind of see more of the uses of this stuff um you know that that example with the items super super helpful right and what you could actually do is say you had like a you know you wanted to display all your slots very easy loop through like that and then draw the text Right, you can draw 64, we'll actually do it like this. And we'll say plus i times 16. And slot i dot name. And that will draw all of the items in our inventory. And then this one being our hotbar. So you can kind of see just how, how really awesome that is. Although I'm actually supposed to loop through that five times, not four. You would want to use a max slots variable for that, absolutely. But look at that, you can see that's our inventory. That's what we have right now. Uh, and it's so easy to do this. It is so, so simple. You know, if you just have a good understanding of, you know, what these structs do, then you can really create stuff that is uh, uh, quite extraordinary. So that's gonna be it for, for this one. I think people should use this more for encompassing their data. Uh, it'll make your life a lot better <laughs> and a lot cleaner and your code a lot better too. Uh, so thank you all very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.